Welcome to Kirsty TV. I'm here today on our Google Hangout with Andy Lyons, who is from Bring Back Desire, and she's going to talk to us about how to have a passionate relationship. And as Andy was saying to me, she's been having lusty sex for 28 years. Hi, Kirsty. How are you? I'm how so are you, Andy? Here. Oh, I'm great. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me on to share the love. I know. Well, I, you know, when I spoke to you, I thought this is a topic that we haven't covered before, but I wanted to delve into it because I think what's great about you is that you make it a really safe topic to talk, but you also have this, you know, three decades in a relationship that's transitioned through so many different things, and I think that's what everyone goes through. How do you maintain that passion when you are having miscarriages, when you're having business failures, when life is happening, really? It takes quite a lot of work. It really does, but it's always worth it. And I'll be sharing how and why. So you, when you started out, when you first met your partner 28 years ago, did you have a instant chemistry? Yes, we did. I have to say that over our five-hour dinner at a French restaurant, I was very good and didn't sleep with him on the first date. That's how strong the chemistry was, but I had to work at that. And we've been very lucky that it's maintained and kept up, but that's because we cultivate that chemistry. You can be in a relationship and lose that chemistry and bring it back, Kirsty. Yeah. So in the beginning, how long was the chemistry there for, would you say? Oh, it felt like for years. We were very lucky. Usually it's only there for about 18 months, and the brain activity proves that usually when you first fall in love, all these delicious feelings and sensations happen, and then boom, you flatline. But for us, we happened to have it go a little longer. We were lucky. And when did you start to notice that you weren't feeling as passionate? Was it something that you actually um, were conscious of, that you kind of went, oh, I'm not as excited, or yeah. what sort of started to happen? I think that when we started having, we had a loss in each trimester, and our focus became on the procreating, having a baby, and feeling very, for me, very nervous about everything and so that's when I noticed that I really needed to start focusing on what is my desire what turns my body on and I readily admit that I tend to lean toward Blanche and the Golden Girls <laughs> I've had urges for uh, most of my life but to have it start fade like that due to the stress due to concerns and fears that I was going through uh, it was important for me to find out what kept me tuned in and turned on centrally and sexually as well as emotionally with my darling man. Well, I think that's something that most people go through at some point, especially if they're trying to conceive, you know, it can almost become like, am I a baby making machine for the man and the woman? Right. And, and what I did to help me through that stage, and I know a lot of women who are watching this show right now have been through the, okay, I'm ovulating, 3 o'clock, let's go, boom, boom, time to have sex. Well, for me, I would be in a board meeting or a sales call, you know, something, and for the female brain to shift that quickly, no, we're aroused by how we feel, not by a Victoria's Secret model. And so I love romance novels, so I sent my husband down to the local, oh, good vibrations type of a shop and said, honey, would you find me uh, some erotic romance literature? I know it's out there and I want it written by women, for women. I don't want penthouse letters. I don't want something raunchy and demeaning. I want something with love, but only, you know, really hot scenes that get me there very quickly. And sure enough, he came home with a series written by a UK publisher called Black Lace at the time. And I'm telling you, you know, by page 35, I was, where are you? Get over here, honey. <laughs> and, uh, and I was able to then have really enjoyable fertility enhancing sex and, and be more about being with my darling man and looking at him with love and adoration and not get caught up in the, okay, is his sperm going to swim there fast enough and, and get my egg? And will I have an egg? And oh my God. And those are the things that can happen during fertility. And I just wanted it to be more romantic and, and if possible, pop some champagne and have a good time. Yeah, and then, I mean, you went through some losses. Um, you miscarried and you had some uh, stillborn children as well. Yes, we had a live delivery at five months, a stillborn at seven, and a miscarriage at 13 weeks. And not only that, every day I'm pregnant, it's like being on a deep sea voyage without Dramamine. 
it's like this. I'm just motion sickness the whole time. So it was a double whammy. And I spent seven years pregnant. <laughs> it's just, I burned those clothes when I was done. But, uh, it, you know, I have two wonderful boys worth all that effort today. Wow. And so what during that time, I mean, I guess this is the thing that I think is really important for other couples or people in relationships to know that we do go through, you know, as life starts to happen, there are times where um, sense and sensuality and sex all starts to wane or you'll have problems. So what challenges were you going through at that time with all of that grief to be able to connect? Did you even feel like making love to your husband? Oh gosh, no, no. And I, we, you know, we did couples work, and that is what I always highly recommend. Even if things are going great, what can you do to really take in gratitude for what you're going through? But when you're going through a hard time, find a coach, a counselor, someone so that they can help you come together and keep the magic alive. And even after we had our successful outcomes, the two boys, we went on and continued in life and we had a wonderful thriving dot com business right out there in LA and it went under after two years and it was a devastating experience for us both financially emotionally everything and I'm telling you we could have called it quits right then and there money the stress everything that was going on and we actually brought someone in house for a couple of days because we were so committed to saving our marriage because we knew we had a lot going for us and we knew we could bring it back we just didn't know how and for the first two days, Kirsty, we were in timeout. We could not say a civil word to each other, probably flipping each other the bird. I mean, seriously, <laughs> it was that bad. And she had us in corners, and we were having to write in our journals and all of this stuff. But the third day, we were recalling, and by the fourth day, the magic was back. And she gave us tools that we, because we continued to have really devastating things happen in life to us, but she gave us the tools that we just put right to work now, and boom solving any issues that can come up. So why do you think that um, sensuality and uh, intimacy is so cornerstone and important to your relationship? It's key because it's about staying tuned into your partner. So as things go here and there and weaving back and forth in life, our characters evolve. And we have moments that we shift and we change and we have ahas and all of these wonderful things happen. But for us to stay tuned in and turned on to each other and share this wonderful relationship that we can't have with anybody else, we need to get physical. We need to get intimate. And that allows us to sort of pull back the layers, the walls that we usually have up with other people, remind each other, you know, looking at each other, that's what the intimacy is about, looking at each other in the eyes, recalling why you fell in love, moving on to passion and intimacy and sex and the deliciousness of all of that and the climactic outcome, it gets us women really grounded in our bodies. It allows our male partners to give to us in such an important fundamental way for them to give to us, which is, you know, they get to provide and take care and they get to win and at the end, all of a sudden, life becomes even clearer, and you're more not only intimate with your partner, you're you have a deeper relationship and connection with yourself and with life. Mm -hmm. And to me, there's just nothing like that that incredible time that you spend together privately in your bedroom or the back seat of a car, <laughs> wherever <laughs> you're taking care of it at that time. <laughs> How frisky well, you are. And I can imagine there'd be a lot of women who, if they were going through a situation where they've either lost their business or their husband's redundant or they've lost children or they're trying to get pregnant and they can't, and they would just be like, the last thing I want is to have sex with you right now. And the men, you know, most, not always, <laughs> but a majority of the time are ready to go. So what would you say to someone who's in that situation where you were, where you didn't want him even touching you? Right. And boy, if you've got toddlers at home who've been hanging on you all day long, you yeah. definitely don't want to be touched. <laughs> You're, You're touched out. <laughs> so what I recommend, again, is having the solo time. Go take that hot shower or that hot bath. Start touching your body and remind, reminding yourself that even though the body, because you've given birth, has and you're getting older, it ain't looking like it used to, you really want to acknowledge and honor and cherish your inner temptress. So many women are 
are tuned into their motherhood, their professional gal, the wife, the community volunteer, churchgoer, but the inner temptress is also so important for a fulfilled, fully expressed life. So go say hi to her. Love the dimpled thighs, the sagging buttocks, you know, all of that good stuff. It's all part of who you are. And as Marty Klein, who wrote the book Sexual Intelligence, said, it's about having great sex with the body you have, the partner you have, and the situation you're in. So for a woman, you know, whether it's putting on sexy lingerie and rubbing oil into yourself, perhaps doing a wonderful um, moment, a dance, a, a touching in front of your partner, or going perhaps alone into your sanctuary, into a private place where no one's bothering you, and finding out, again, what is turning you on. And for me, of course, that's where the erotic romance literature comes in because it gets sex on the brain faster than anything else. And Dr. Laura Berman is always talking about reading some sexy material to remind yourself, oh, yeah, I like it when that happens. Oh, yeah. And, you know, because you do. You're trying to bring back those sensations that you had. And, and and were you this sexually adventurous early on in your relationship or through the therapy and the counseling and the talking? Like, I mean, were you using these, um, uh, the, I just saw on your YouTube, there's the tantric chair and there's um, different, you know, toys. Right, there's different products. And, and you know, dancing, called, you know, as you say, dancing, doing a little strip tease. Right, so a little were you as adventurous in the beginning or has this grown over all these years together? Well, yeah. Because I've been reading erotic romance literature for years, I've learned a lot of things that I never would have known about. We just we just don't come with these handbooks. Mm. Um, prior to my husband, yes, I can say I was adventurous, but even then, it was not so much knowing what I wanted. And the beauty of being with a partner who loves you and adores you is that I call it emotionally safe sex, where you can go in and explore your fantasies, or at least point to something that if you're too sh if you're feeling too shy, and you can bring in the pleasure products. Really good lubrication is so important for women at any stage because nature does not always provide what it should, whether it's due to allergies or to medicine or to the aging process. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you know, the buzz toys are also very important because they can enhance and they can enhance what's going on for the, the gentleman as well as they age. So, and they can bring in a lot of fun. And one of my favorite things that I, I tell couples to do, if they can, is perhaps go get a room at a hotel one night and go down to the bar and pretend you've never met. And some one woman said, oh, she puts even puts on a wig. To make it different <laughs> and have the guy order a drink for her at the bar as if he were a stranger, you know, the husband. And you can have a really good time as long as you don't break down into giggles. But you can have a wonderful time exploring together. That well, and I think that that's really key that, you know, things do get stale and they do get old and we have to find ways to, if you're going to stay with one partner that long, you have to find a way to spice things up and to stay interested and engaged with each other. What, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely, because that's to Perel, you see right behind me, Mating in Captivity, a great book to read because, you know, DNA-wise, it's not like we were meant to really be, you know, the wedding vows, you're going to make love with the same person day in and day out, month after month, year after year. What? <laughs> you, you need to, trust me, I've been married 25 years and been with my darling man, you have to spice it up. But, you know, one of the things that happens a lot of times, Kirsty, is we gals, we get so caught up in our world and our way of communicating that we forget that we're married to Y chromosomes, not hairy women. And so we often look at to our men and expect them to read minds and take subtle hints, which they absolutely do not do, nor do they value. And we forget to use the right language with our guys. And so, you know, the lack of appreciation in a man's life will have him shutting down and have him not wanting any sex. Mm -hmm. Just like for us, we need to be understood. We need to be able to share our stories and be heard and be told, hmm. <laughs> well, and so, you know, as you said, everything's not always rosy and you had this um, challenge in your marriage at one point when you weren't even speaking and you brought a therapist to live in the house. So what was going on for you at that time that, you weren't able to communicate with him what you wanted. What do you think happened that you lost that lust oh, we, of attraction? Yeah, we were angry. We'd had it with each other. Done. You uh, don't like anymore. Uh, 
bottom line, and that's what happens with a lot, you know, can happen in a lot of relationships, just that communication stops and you've been so angry or fearful or whatever every time you look at your darling and all of a sudden it just gets triggered when you look at them yeah. and then you add kids to the equation and especially young kids where you're not necessarily sleeping through the night or if you're up and you're worried about finances etc that stress builds up and you start just like your attack dogs with each other yeah. and you well, really have to step back when you're that angry you don't want to make love to this person let alone you know talk to them let alone touch them so how did you start to shift from not wanting to speak to him or touch him to getting to a place where you were back connected again we had to start talking again about our values our goals for life why we fell in love remembering why we fell in love that can be huge and then looking at each other in the eyes and saying I fell in love with you I am in love with you because and when you start focusing on the positive uh, you will start that shift it will start happening and you start remembering and then the anger starts dissolving and the anger sometimes can be triggered by your own stuff or things that are outside that you've decided to attach to your darling and you start having the opportunity to deal with some issues you may have so it really is that sitting down across from each other and remembering why I love you and gosh when they start saying it back to you it feels so good and you can come back well that's amazing because I think that that's a place a lot of people get to and nowadays they're too quick to go and get a divorce and I think that it's um, it's courageous it's it takes a lot of courage and hard work to be willing to sit in that space with a partner and as you say feel emotionally safe well and also I highly recommend anybody who has had infidelity happen infidelity is a wonderful wake-up call to what is not working in your relationship and it's easy to point fingers but at the same time it's a great opportunity to look within the relationship and don't throw it out Dr. Tammy Nelson has a wonderful book on infidelity she talks about it all the time go to her website drtammynelson.com there are steps that you can take to bring that intimacy back sure it's going to take some time and take some work but there are so many successful relationships who made it through turbulent waters and for those of you who are in a tough time right now trust me it the, when you get on the other side I have goosebumps on how good it is <laughs> so please just hang in there do the work find out what the core is and I'm not saying stay in abusive relationship if someone is belittling and devaluing you and the language is awful and they're not willing to work on it or if you're being hurt in any way of course you need to move on but a lot of times it is the two people can work on this together and find a way wonderful so I want to ask you some speed questions so when I um, say the word, you're going to have to give me um, the first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you think of when I say masturbation. Self-pleasuring. Mm -mm -mm. Porn. Eh, not good. Swing <laughs> swinging. Well, it's fun to read about, but it's not for me. Uh, dressing up. As in? Uh, costumes. Fantasy. Love. Love. Oral sex. Delicious. <laughs> so let's talk about oral sex because we had a little bit of a chat about this on the phone and um, you mentioned that for a lot of women this is something that they don't know how to ask for or don't know how to give. Um, so or what do you have to say about or oral they're doing it right. I, you know, oh, it's a wonderful way to engage with each other. So it can be you know with you with him there are tricks though and and it's especially hard for the woman because every woman like a snowflake snowflake is built differently when it comes to her pleasure and the zones how a clitoris should be stimulated all of that is in independent to every single gal whereas the guys with all due respect my darling men you know pretty much the same thing works on every guy and so I have a, I carry Dr. Sadie Allison's book uh, tickle his pickle wonderful book very <laughs> funny very tasteful very <laughs> playful That's and fine. you will learn everything you can about how to take care of the his pickle, pickle. The pickle. The and pickle. Um, 
And there's also, you know, tickle her fancy. So, you know, there's ways for you to help your man find out what you need for oral sex. And the best way to find that out is through self-loving, self-pleasuring. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with self-pleasuring in front of each other as well. It's a wonderful way to have a fun time that's unique and different. But it also gives him some great ideas on how you like things, and it helps you be able to express to your darling man what you need to have yeah. a, a positive outcome. But again, you know, we, uh, we're raised with a lot of shame about down there. And, uh, and so for a lot of women, it can be very hard to let go, to relax, mm -hmm. to even let that area sort of open up and be so vulnerable as to share with their, their darling man. But again, it's worth it. Well, I think that that is a um, huge issue and challenge for a lot of people. Like, how do I express what I want? How do I feel safe enough to be that open? And also around being willing to share what they like or dislike. I think that's something that, you know, I know when I was younger, you don't want to offend someone. Um, yeah. You don't want to hurt the person that you love and make them feel inadequate in any way. True. I mean, you have to be careful with men as far as you don't want to criticize them. So that's why you focus on the positive. Oh, I love when you do that. Now, if you did this over here or moved that way. But you're right, Christy. If you're in a new relationship, it can be really hard to feel safe yet and vulnerable to share in that way. And uh, it may take a little extra time, which, again, being able to show the, show the love and share the love with your darling man in front of him that will give him some good information and also turn him on and yourself on. Well, I have just loved talking to you. I think that there's so many great points for people about, you know, being willing to explore self-love. Um, and as you said in the beginning, like sometimes you've got to spark that desire and interest back in yourself. So what one last thing would you advise to everybody out there? Oh, I advise all of you to continue deepening the love of yourself first always and then with your partner your beloved partner but also deepen the erotic connection because erotic means illumination and keeping ourselves illuminated with our beloved will help you grow into a deeper more loving relationship that is so satisfying not to mention a sexually satisfied woman is healthier and happier too thank you so much for being here and a healthier sexually active woman is what we all want to be um, and men out there I hope that you have gotten something great from this interview today um, I'm going to go to the store soon so don't forget to tweet tweet us to subscribe below to check out our other videos on the YouTube channel Facebook us send some comments or tweet us I know that Andy will be happy to answer them too and we'll see you next time on Kirsty TV